Taking a step back to cyber, uh, Dr. Fox has been very vocal about the investment he wants to see happen in cyber warfare, cyber security, and cyber realm. What exactly does that investment look like? What are we investing in? Well, I can't answer that question, President. It's one of the things we're consulting on. Um, uh, and, so I, and that's a major theme of the, of the Green Paper process. Um, but we're all clear this is a very important issue for us to address, both in terms of pr protection and defense offensive activity as well. The, 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 this country is already on a significant cyber attack uh, from around the world. We know that's happening. The increased focus on the cyber threat is, is really welcome, long overdue. And we're looking forward to creative suggestions from industry as well, how we take that process forward. Okay, talking about future threats, and cyber is certainly part of that, but taking a step back and looking at what possibly could be the UK's biggest foreign threat to national security in, say, 2020, where do you think that might lie? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the question addressed by the national security strategy, which has tiered the threats in great detail. Uh, and, and, and I think I, I just, it's, it's a long document to summarise during an interview, and I won't try doing that. But we have identified cyber, you're quite right, as one of the major threats. Um, but we have decided that we must adopt an adaptable posture. The world is more unknowable, more uncertain. It's been for a very long time. We can't focus on any one particular threat. We must be ready across the piece, properly identifying exactly how we address each one. So, you know, international terrorism is obviously a major issue for us. Uh, but uh, the, the consequences of, of uh, climate change, which brings competition for resources. In but, but if you could point to one spot on the globe. <laughs> I'm not going to do that for you. Do or I? even a couple. No, I'm not even going to do that for okay. you. I think, I, think, I think your viewers can work out for themselves where they think the real threats come. And some of those threats, of course, are more specific to challenges in the, in the Pacific, where, we, where America may be more concerned than we are, others more European, where we may be more concerned ourselves. Uh, look, the emerging events at present in, in North Africa show how fast the world is changing at present and how reluctant I would be. It would be a very brave politician who, who chose the next trouble spot around the world and, and said that's where we should concentrate our resources. I'm not going to play that game, I'm afraid. When you were appointed as minister, you said you would only want to step into a job that you believed in. If you had to do it over again, would you step into those shoes? I am absolutely convinced that if this isn't the best job in government, which it may well be, it's one of the very best. Um, I, it is absolutely fascinating to have to contend with such a wide range of issues. Just, you just asked me, about, asked me about international security. I have to worry about the problems of small and medium-sized businesses selling very small items to MOD. I have to look at, at the challenges of the ongoing campaign in Afghanistan. I have to deal with large companies. I have to deal with armed forces. It, it's fascinating. The range of issues, intellectual, practical, political, economic, commercial, you have to deal with, is probably unprecedented and unrivaled anywhere else in government. So it's, it, after my money, it's about the best job going. When will we know, Mr. Love, when we've done enough in Afghanistan? <laughs> well, we all know what the dates are. They've been set for us by President Obama and, and by David Cameron. Uh, and we all know the challenges we face, and we're confident we can get there. Uh, as you know and I know, we're not going to turn Afghanistan into a fully functioning Western democracy. That's not the objective. It's to make sure it's secure in its own terms. And the work to build up the Afghan security forces is going really well. Uh, we're getting very encouraging reports now about the work being done with the army and the police force. That's the test. When can Afghanistan sustain itself without the international community? Uh, and and that's, that's a, a process that is, that is, I think, going better than people realise. I think we're moving from pessimism to almost cautious optimism about the prospects of success. And if it's not deemed secure by 2015? Now that's not a question for me to address, but okay. I think we'll get there. I really do. I, I'm confident that the growing competence of the Afghan security forces means we can actually meet the objectives.